Hi, and thanks for clicking on another video. I noticed a while ago, uh, whenever I post pictures of the studio, I always get a lot of reaction to it, and uh, had mentioned in a, a past video that uh, I thought I'd take you guys on a studio tour one of these days. So uh, here's the day. So I'm going to give you a, a, the quick 10 cent tour of uh, what I'm using here and uh, how we get the job done. And so first place to stop would be where it all starts, and that's in the booth. The booth here is about the smallest one you're going to find from a whisper room. It uh, measures two and a half by three and a half feet. Uh, basically like doing voiceover in a phone booth, so uh, don't wave your arms around too terribly much. Of course, we've got a monitor here that uh, we display the uh, scripts on, some lighting. Two-inch ATS panels, there's three of them in here, along with a couple of bass traps to help uh, tune the sound. The mics are a Sennheiser 416. And then a blue baby bottle, which uh, really wasn't seeing a whole lot of use until lately when I started using it for some corporate narrations when you're looking for a sound that's a little less uh, in your face. Moving out into the control room, first of all, there's the preamps. We have an Avalon M5 that's attached to the baby bottle. Then a John Hardy M1, that one goes with the 416. And both of them run directly into the audio interface here, which is an RME Fireface UC. And that's as complicated as the signal chain gets here. Uh, from microphone to preamp, straight into the interface, all uh, compression and EQ and whatnot is always done in post. We keep it as clean as we can. Moving up to the displays on the far left, you've got the Pro Tools edit window. In the middle is the mix window. And on the far right, a monitor where I throw scripts, and this one is also mirrored in the booth. So anything that I throw onto that display ends up showing up in the booth. Down to the other side of the rack, you've got my phone patch. That's a Telos One. Below that, the old Zephyr, the ISDN box. No ISDN service here. That thing hasn't seen electricity in years now. And then a Monster Power power conditioner. All the processing here is done, as I said before, in post. I usually use an Eventide Ultra Channel. Very flexible, does everything that I needed to do, and that's uh, really my go-to. When it comes to the output, I use a mastering limiter by Massey. It's called an L2000. Really helps to kind of pull things together and tighten things up and make it nice and loud for broadcast purposes. Down to computer land, we have the old Mac Pro. This is a 2011 Mac Pro, and it's, uh, it's getting older. I can only go as far as Yosemite for the OS, which means I can't go any further than Pro Tools 11. But that seems to work out fine. It runs fast. I was thinking about doing a Mac Mini, but uh, really dragging my feet because this works so well. And, of course, we've got the, uh, the APC, uninterruptible power supply and power conditioner, and the modem. Moving over to the sidecar rack, we've got the mixer here, which uh, doesn't really pass audio out into the real world. It's just for routing stuff around the studio and, of course, creating the mix minus for the phone patch. It's a Mackie LM3204. It's 16 stereo channels and uh, four sends per channel with EQ. Of course, the EQ doesn't get used for anything. But it's really great for routing things around. Getting hard to find now. Down below that, we have the CD player. And a Behringer distribution amp that also serves as the headphone amp for the booth. At the very bottom, a Tascam DAT machine. I've got some archived sound effects and band mixes and uh, other just fun stuff to listen to. So probably more stuff than I need, but I'm kind of a gear geek, so uh, it stays. And of course, we have to talk about monitors. I'm a Genelec guy. These are Genelec 8030As. Super clean, super accurate, uh, maybe a little more uh, surgically accurate than, uh, than you'd like, but uh, they tell no lies. So uh, if it sounds good in here, it sounds good in the real world. So there you have it. That's the studio here. Uh, looks complicated. Really isn't. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here that I, I probably don't need, but uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a gear geek, so uh, so it stays at least for the time being. And uh, again, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. More videos coming up, and uh, I really appreciate you watching.